Forms are not fun, but they're also important. Today, I want to show you how using Kendo React can make building your React forms a whole lot easier. Let's dive right in. What you're looking at is a small little demo app I set up with a basic implementation of a form already in place. The way this code works is I have two inputs, one for the username and another for the password. I store the data for these inputs using two React hooks up here. I make sure to update those data variables each time any of those, these inputs change with these on change handlers. And then finally, I use an on submit handler on this form to gather up the form's data. And in this case, I'm just going to alert it onto the screen. But if this were a production app, I would likely send these values off to some server for processing. And this code works. You can see that it successfully gathers this data and alerts it up. But it also shows how messy building forms with React out of the box can be. For example, there's quite a bit of repetitive code in here, like needing to define a state variable for each individual form field and having to manually bind these on change handlers as well. Now, in this case, this form is two fields, so this really isn't all that bad. But in the real world, when you're building forms that can have 5, 10, 15, or even more fields, this approach can get unwieldy fairly quickly. Also, React by default doesn't help you handle some of the trickier aspects of form development, like styling or validation. To help us with all that and more, today we're going to use the form controls built into Kendo React a professional suite of UI components we make here at Progress. Kendo React provides a number of useful form components, like autocompletes, dropdown lists, date pickers, editors, and more, as well as a robust set of form APIs to help you create a consistent way of building forms throughout your apps, or even throughout your organization. If we head back to the app, you'll see that I've already installed a number of Kendo React packages from NPM, and put in a few imports up here to save us a little bit of time. Next, I'm gonna paste in a slightly updated version of this form that uses these Kendo React components. Specifically, the Kendo React form, the form element, which is just gonna provide a way of grouping components for some more advanced layouts, and a field component for each of the username and password input fields. And I do also have to change up this submit handler is Kendo React provides a far easier to use object up here for a submit handler. So I'll switch this code to use this and we'll go ahead and alert that data object instead. And when I save that, the first thing you'll notice is I have a form that just looks a bit nicer, even without any custom CSS, is this form is now using the Kendo React material design theme. I even get these kind of nice floating labels which is something you can customize depending on your personal preference, but it's something that I actually quite like. You also get built-in accessibility, as that's also a really big priority for us on the Kendo React team. The other thing to notice is in the code. For example, notice that you no longer have to individually track state variables. In fact, I can completely remove these two hooks, as Kendo React is now taking care of that for me. I also no longer need to manually provide change handlers for each form field. And as I mentioned earlier, our form submit handler now gets the entire form's data in a simple JavaScript object that's ready for you to send off to your server for handling. Kind of cool, but we're really just getting started. Suppose that we now want to add validation to this form. With Kendo React, doing so is as easy as passing a validator prop to your field component which needs to be a function that determines whether this field contains valid data or not. So let's say that we, for now, just want to make sure that the user provides values for this field, essentially make sure that they are required. So we'll name the validator required validator. And I'll pass it in both for the username and for the password as well. Next, we'll need to define this validator. So I'll head up here. And as I mentioned, this is a simple function. It's passed a string, which is the value that the field currently contains. And you need to return an error message if the field is invalid. So let's do a quick ternary check. And if there is a value there, we'll go ahead and return an empty string. Else, let's pass back a quick message. We'll keep it simple. This field is required. 
And when I save that and head back to my browser, you'll see that I have the same form. But when I try to submit this, you'll see that I have some validation now in place that prevents me from submitting with this invalid data. And I again have some pretty decent styling, all without having to manually write a bunch of CSS. So once again, pretty cool. But let's take this even one step further. The real power of Kendo React is just how customizable really everything you see here is. For example, back in the code, notice that I'm currently using a Kendo React input component to render each of these fields. This works, and it gives you the nice default display that we've been looking at so far. But we in the Kendo React team also realize that developers have real world requirements and usually need to change things up to match their internal UX and design requirements. So one thing you can do is create your own lightweight form components that give you the ability to customize your field's rendering while continuing to work within the Kendo React form system. To show this, let's suppose that we have some requirements where we need to show a field's validation message under the field itself and not sort of use the built-in browser behavior that has this little pop-up. To implement this, let's head back to our example and we'll switch from using the Kendo React input to a custom input that we're going to go ahead and define. And we'll do that for both the username and the password. And we'll head up to the top of this file. We'll just put it in one place to keep things simple. And we call this custom input. And this component gets passed a number of useful props in a variable called field render props. And Kendo React also provides really good TypeScript support. So I can just type this in. And if I was curious what was in this, I could just use TypeScript to find a full list as well as some really nice documentation. And we get this data in, and what we need to return is essentially whatever we want Kendo React to render. So if, for example, for whatever reason, we wanted to render pizza, we could pass this in and Kendo React will pass this along to the browser. But in our case, we still want to render an input. We are building forms here, but we want to render it with a few customizations. And to do that, I'm going to destructure a couple things out of these field render props. Specifically, I want to grab the validation message, essentially these error messages if the field is invalid so that I can use it for my custom input. And touched, which is a Boolean Kendo React provides that indicates whether the field has been interacted with by the user yet or not. Essentially, we don't want to show any sort of error messages until the user has actually done something with the field. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first pass in this rest parameter, this others, as a way of just passing along things like, for example, this label and name attribute. We want to make sure those get passed down to the input control. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of conditional logic under here. What I want to do is say, if the user has touched this field, if they've interacted with it, and if there is a validation message, which there only will if this field is invalid, then I want to show the validation message down here. And I'm going to display it in another component that Kendo React provides, just a simple air label. And I'll render the validation message in there and go ahead and save. And when I do that, you'll see that my form continues to work as a form. I can provide values in here and submit. But if I have an error, the error message is now displayed underneath the field. And once again, Kendo React is automatically taking care of styling this and making it look nice for me automatically. And this is the real power of Kendo React. Smart defaults that help you avoid some of the verbose code that's inherent in React form development, like state management and change handlers. But you also get this powerful ability to customize the built-in behavior to meet your exact requirements. And what I've shown you today is just the basics. To get a sense of the real power of Kendo React, let's head to the Kendo React form guidelines, which are in the Kendo React documentation and which you can access at bit.ly slash Kendo React dash forms. Here, you'll see some of Kendo React's other components in action. So if I scroll down here, you'll see we've got a date picker. There's a lot in here, a uh, color picker, slider, switch. If I go further down, things like drop down lists and whatnot as well. The form guidelines also provide a number of different form validation options. So for example, if you wanted to show, let's say, for instance, a list of error messages on the top of the field, there are examples on how to do that. 
There are examples on different layouts. If you want to orient your form in two different columns, those there are options for that as well. And each of these examples, and as you can see, there are quite a few of them, comes with complete source code. So you could just take this and copy and paste it and use it for your own apps, or you could tinker with it. You can work with it in StackBlitz, which is a fun little online environment where you can toy around with your code as well. So if you've ever had trouble with forms in React, or if you're just looking for a more efficient way to build, give Kendra React a shot. Between our intuitive form APIs and our more powerful form controls like autocompletes, dropdown lists, date pickers, and whatnot, you'll find everything you need to streamline the form development that you do throughout your app and maybe even throughout your organization. To get started, head to kendoreact.com and click the big Start Free Trial button. Every trial of Kendo React includes 30 days of unlimited access to all of Kendo React, as well as our legendary support resources, just in case you run into any problems or have any questions along the way. So give Kendo React's form APIs a shot and let us know what you think.